I was asked recently how I control my bass lines and the low end in my music and this video is going to explain just that by using various songs of mine as demonstration. So this first one is called Wishing Well. So let's just hear a snippet of it. Now the bass is separated into two parts, the high bass and the low bass. Together it sounds like this, and just the highs, and just the lows. So by doing this I really feel like it helps clean up the low end. Something I could have done instead is just left the high pass filter off, or maybe in some circumstances people might boost the bass because I felt like there's not enough. But I really feel like that muddies up the mix. Instead what I like to do is create an operator. This is the uh, the bass line I'm using now was created with the Mini Brute. It's just a recording so I can't show you how to do that in operator. But I can show you the original bass line which sounds very similar. Let me hear the difference. This one just uh, has more of the the high end cut off a little bit more. But this was the original that I used. So what I have here is just a uh, saw wave and a sine wave. That's it. I didn't do any fancy configuring. That's all I have. I took the FM off so they're playing together simultaneously. One's not affecting the other. Make sure you change this option. Otherwise, it'll create more of an FM sound like that. I don't know if you can hear that. It's really quiet. So let me undo this put it back to the way it was. Alright, let's hear it without the effects. And all I did is put a low pass filter on it. Now the frequency that I, uh, the frequency of the cutoff of the low pass filter um, in this case is 200 Hertz. I like to stick it anywhere between 150 to 250 depending on the high group. Like this group I cut off at 250 so maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea to move this up to 250. So it's a really simple process. Afterwards, what you can do is add, uh, in this case, I added a limiter. Um, before, I remember I added some light compression, but I liked our bass a lot better. And uh, what you would do, oh, I don't have a spectrum on there. What you would do is grab a spectrum, find out what the most prominent low note is. In this case it's around 60 around 62 Hertz. So I'm gonna leave it around 63 because it's moving up a little bit. Yeah, 67. So somewhere around that area. Let's turn our bass back on. Hear the difference. It just really fattens it up, adds more warmth to it. I like the sound, I've been using this a lot on my uh, bass lines. But before that, as I said, I just put a limiter on it. Uh, just move the ceiling down, maybe turn the gain up a little bit. And it's really that simple. Um, a lot of my bass lines aren't even using a any other waveforms except for sine waves because sometimes this is really all you need. 
for that low end. If you if you add a lot of effects um, like reverb or flanging or chorus or anything to your low end, it could muddy it up later on. Um, if you're trying to get uh, more for clarity, all you really have to do is add a sine wave or maybe uh, slide in a little bit of triangle in there. Let's hear how that sounds. It just adds a little bit of character to it. With my uh, Mini Brute, a lot of what I've been doing is um, using uh, a sine wave and a little bit of triangle, maybe uh, some square for some odd harmonics. The, the difference between sine waves and square and triangle waves are square and triangle have odd harmonics, while sine waves and saw waves have even harmonics. Well, sine wave just has one harmonic if, uh, if it's all by itself. You can just look on here and see there's pretty much one prominent note. Well, if I were to change this to a saw wave, it has uh, duplications at every octave. Where if you look at the triangle or square, you notice it's a uh, push down. Uh, those are all uh, odd harmonics. But that's a totally different lesson. So now we're moving on to the second song. This one's called Thrice Cream. Uh, this time the bass line is separated into three parts. Another good tip is when you're using sidechain compression, I like to use peak uh, for the low end of the bass lines because I feel like it's more uh, instant, quick, and to the point versus RMS has more of a groove and a feel to it. Like I use RMS for uh, like other synth instruments and maybe the high end of the bass line, but as far as the low bass, like 300 hertz and below, I'm using uh, peak uh, so that it, whenever the kick hits, it really turns it down quickly and I just feel like I can control it better. So let's take a look and listen to this song. I think I have another bass part over here. Both similar, but they have uh, slightly different characteristics. Uh, let's solo this and take a listen. So here's the really high end, and I have this pan to the left. Uh, this one has reverb, flange, some EQ. Other than that, I think it's, I think they're all the same exact operator. Well, maybe slightly different, but they all have generally the same characteristics. Here's a slightly lower saw, and this one's panned to the right. Still has the reverb and the flanger on it. Has an extra EQ just to, I guess, make it a little bit more dull because the high end, a lot of the high ends coming, the really high ends coming from this. Now let's take a look at the low bass line. Notice I took all of the effects off of here. Uh, I don't like it to muddy up the bass. I don't feel like really low end needs to have reverb um, unless you're specifically using that uh, as an effect. But uh, throughout the entire song, adding reverb is really, I feel like it's just going to muddy the low end up. Uh, this bass is slightly different. This one does have a flange on it. I did take it off earlier, but then I liked it a little bit less. It just gave it a little bit of a like a twinge, like a, I don't know, like a weird phasing effect kind of thing. Um, it has a li like the dry wet is mostly dry signal, but it just has a little bit of that processed signal in there. I don't know if you can hear it, but I like the sound of it. It just makes it sound different if you really are focusing on the bass line.
For my third example, I'm going to use a dubstep track. This song is called Malfunction, but you can still use the same exact techniques as I was using earlier with dubstep or other genres. See, this is just separated by this. Which, again, I'm just using an operator, overdrive, uh, amp, saturator, and chorus, and some EQs. And then for the low end, um, it's this uh, a lot of the same stuff I have. A saw wave, sine wave, another saw, and some noise in there. And of course I have my low pass filter. Again, this just helps separate everything out. I could have used the bass from this. But then that bass would also have been overdriven, uh, the amplifier, saturated, chorus. Uh, it would have been really affected and less clean. I didn't like the way that it sounded. I did try it out. And I mean, really, nine out of 10 times, I like to have a, a really clean, solid bass line uh, of just a uh, sine wave, or uh, I know square waves are really great. For right now, I've been intending to use sine waves and saw waves for a lot of my older stuff. My newer stuff tends to have uh, triangles and square waves. I like the odd harmonics now. I guess I'm straying away from what I used to do. And then here's the second part of the, the second drop, I guess. Still the same exact thing. You can change up the high end of the bass, but leave the low end. Um, it's really simple. You really don't have whole much to change. Uh, you can keep the same exact instrument, but just change the high part of the bass. And that right there are a few basic techniques to controlling your bass line, your low end, uh, making it powerful while keeping it clean and unprocessed. Let me know in the comments if you found a better way to do this or if you're having issues doing this or maybe if you just have a tutorial idea for me. In any case, I hope you liked the video and thanks for watching.